Oh, that's an amazing song. I enjoy that song. That's one of my favorite songs because when you listen to the lyrics, it talks about the dedication and loyalty that you know, we as Christians need to have. And that dedication and loyalty should not be conditional. Uh, if it's a true, authentic relationship with Christ, you know, with true, authentic relationship with God. So I love that song, you know, and, I, and one of the key words, he says, if you, if you left the grave, right, so will I. Mm. And how many of us are living in, 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 in this grave, this, this, this place of, of death and, 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 and loss? And, and, you know, and, and it's like, no, get up and live, you know, thrive, not just live, but thrive as a human being, as a Christian. So I just love, enjoy that song. <laughs> Keep going. That's good preaching, man. <laughs> That's good preaching. Well, it, it, in, the, in the time of where we are as, uh, you know, and the, the, the nervousness of the shutdown, you know, possibly coming back, uh, you know, the shelves are looking bare. Uh, not only do I barely have the money or I'm going from check from check and and I, when I get to the stores, to even be able to buy stuff is gone. You know, so there's a lot of, of stress that happens. And, you know, it, 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 in, in essence, living this Christian walk puts a demand on us, which is, I don't think it's an unreasonable demand. I think it's a, a, it's a demand that God can put on us because we're not alone. Hmm. And to be able to say, no, walk this walk held high, your head held high, walk this walk in spite of. Uh, so I think uh, this song just really ministers to me when I think about life and where we are right now and, and what the, the demand that's put on us as Christians, which is, once again, it's a reasonable demand. It's a reasonable demand. Yes, yes, because we're not alone in this. <laughs> yeah. Scripture says, I find his commandments to not be grievous. Mm -hmm. So it's not that there is this uh, pressure on us um, because he's unreasonable. Yeah, his word is very reasonable. And I love the thing about loyalty, because loyalty, you're right, it's not transactional. Mm. It's, it's a gift that one gives because they've been inspired yep. by someone to receive that gift. And that is, that is so, so important. Well, you know, we're still in between the yep. finality, the certification by the Electoral College, and yes. all of that you know, with regard to who's president of the United States, uh, other nations around the world, you know, have embraced, you know, the new president, uh, president-elect Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, and then there are those who are still, you know, trying to say, okay, let's prove it out, which is great. I mm -hmm. think that's part of the American system. We should count it out. We should prove it. We should have that flexibility. We shouldn't manipulate the system. No. That's a problem but we should be able to let that system play out and say once and for all, you know, who it is. Um, I noticed some of the preachers and the prophets out there are backpedaling. <laughs> kind of like, okay, it doesn't matter who's in, in, in power. God's in control. Well, yeah, we, we, we believed that all along. Yes. But, you know, some people made it seem like the, 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 the nation was going to collapse, the world was going to collapse, you know, if our candidate didn't get into office or this candidate didn't get into office or my candidate didn't win, you know, uh, and no, God is in control and he has to be in control all the time. And that's, that's the important thing about our theology. Our theology frames the way we think and how we respond to what's happening in the world around us. Remember, three, three big answers uh, to the three big questions. Uh, who is God? What does it mean to live in this world? What does it mean to be human? Those things are clearly expressed in the context of our Christian faith. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but before we go on, welcome to our 8 a.m. Yeah, we just jump right in. Experience. Yes. I, got, I got my cup of tea here. And I got my earpiece, so I'm, I'm a little fancy so they can talk to us. <laughs> you saw last week where they had to hand us the mic and we had a little mic issue. Uh, you know, so we, we, we're stepping up our game with this live situation. It's a little awkward, but um, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. Come in, anybody? Yeah. No? All right, just making sure. Ooh, we continue <laughs> to evolve. And, and that's what it's about. You know, this is a period that you could look at negatively and be overwhelmed by all the things that are wrong with this particular season that we're in, or you could see it optimistically and say, wow, this is making a demand on my creativity, my innovation. It's forcing me to trust God in ways that I didn't have to trust him before. 
And I think that, you know, every believer has to have seasons of supernatural dependence on God, mm -hmm. where he lets us know, he assures us by his participation in what we're going through and his, the power of his presence that he is with us, that he loves us. Did you hear that? He said every believer, every believer has <laughs> to go through seasons of divine, supernatural, supernatural dependency, dependency on, on God. Yes, yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yep. how we walk. You know, Jesus said you'll be witnesses. So we are a witness to God's love, his life, mm -hmm. and his light. And, and that's key because when you look at a witness and uh, uh, coming from a court case, you know, witness was whether you've gone through an experience, so you're speaking from your experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on what kind of witness you are, or you, you're, you're, you're a witness because you're speaking from observation, you observed, you know, somebody go through it supernaturally, uh, you know, so that, that key, t that word witness represents so many different aspects of our walk, you know, as believers. You are full of sermons this no. morning. <laughs> you are just full of sermons this morning. Wow. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, you know. well, people are trying to get their bearing now because even as believers, you know, we don't rest now because, you know, there's a president in power. The church has been in existence, the Church of Jesus, for 2,000 years. We've gone through administrations, empires, kings, uh, queens, uh, prime minister. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah, the church has continued through all of this. The church mm -hmm. doesn't shut down and have to regroup every four years or six years or wherever, you know, the, whatever the time period is that uh, nations elect their leaders. No, the Church of Jesus Christ continues. The kingdom of God is present. It's real, made real by the Holy Spirit, and we continue as believers to be, you know, that love, life, and light of God in, in the world. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so important. And, we, you know, there are times like this that we can get caught up in the political fervor and the social issues that, that are at play and forget that. Yeah. Forget that we are, yes, in the world, but not of the world. We're not a product of its anxieties and its stresses, etc., you know, we have a peace that the world can't give. Peace that only comes from Jesus Christ. No, that's good. That's good. Well, I'm excited about service today. And we didn't start off with a prayer uh, because today we're going to talk about prayer. Yeah. Well, right? we're going to talk about prayer over the next several weeks because, you know, we, we talk about the government of God, the kingdom of God, and, and, and the rule and reign of Christ. How do we participate as believers? Because the scripture says that, we are seated in heavenly places with him. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that we reign and rule with him. And some people think, some believers think that that's going to be in the future only, that it's, it's the kingdom age to come. But no, he is seated. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father right now. The scripture says, sit at my right hand. Remember, after his resurrection, he ascends up into heaven, right? He sits at the right hand of the father, the place of power. So what does the Father say? Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And that's why the kingdom is the now exactly. will be. Exactly. So right now, you know, we're, we're under the reign of Christ. All governments, nations, principalities, powers, they are all under him. And he's working through the program of God. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible is, is a book that you can pick up and read and, and get the stories. But to understand the mega theme, all right, the main storyline that, that, that runs through it, it's like a puzzle, and you have to put pieces together. And that's why there's a need for the teacher, the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, these individuals that God has anointed to understand the scripture and communicate it uh, to people. I've spent the last 42 years of my life, you know, digging, and, and, and I wish I knew back then some of the things I know now, but I had to go through a process of, of learning, and God, you know, chose a way for me to develop and grow spiritually. Yeah, he has grown. He has grown. Like, <laughs> we've gone through a process. And I, and I was telling him, I thank God that he does a church, does church the way he does church, because uh, your earlier days, you were super deep. I was, uh, look, I went from the Nation of Islam, which was one radical group, one extreme, to Pentecostalism, which is another radical group. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, everything was sin. So I, I, I had to learn. I had to grow. But God knew that I needed to go from one extreme to the other, and then he would bring me to a place of center, a place of balance. But that's how God works usually, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, uh, 
change doesn't come from the extreme. Change comes from the median. Uh, extremes may be the catalyst for change, like we've seen socially and politically in our nation, uh, but at the end of the day, it's when civil voices, reasonable voices, sit down at the table mm -hmm. and negotiate and compromise that we actually move forward. Yeah, no, this is, this is really good. This is good. Uh, so the Bible is a puzzle. Ah. <laughs> right? And, and there's pieces. You got the teacher. You and life is a puzzle. It. Well, yeah, life You're is You're going to be puzzle. talking about life being a puzzle. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but think, think about this. I, I, I was reflecting on this, and, and we're going to get into prayer and the approaches to prayer and understanding um, our confidence. Uh, what, what does it mean to come in the name of Jesus you know, uh, not just the power of the name, but there's a specific reason why the name was given. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, how our attitude should be, um, what should be our ultimate uh, goal, which is the will of God. Mm -hmm. So although we come with certain, you know, uh, wants and desires, etc., ultimately, God knows what's best. So we're going to talk about that. What does it mean in the, in, in the context of spiritual warfare? You know, and shout out to all of our NSBT students out there. Yes. Thank you for uh, becoming, a, becoming a part of this new community, the New School for Biblical Theology. And it biblical is, theology, is, it's important because mm -hmm. that's, that's foundational. It, it is the unfolding story of God's redemption of humanity and his restoration of cosmic order. Unfolding of God's redemption for humanity and, and restoration of cosmic order. Exactly. Not exactly. just, you know, the order in somebody's house or, in, you know, the order in somebody's life. Right. Cosmic order. Right. So biblical theology deals with the storyline. Biblical theology approaches the scripture and understanding the scripture based upon the perspective of the writers, mm -hmm. their worldview at the time, their experience at the time, the context. So if you don't understand that, you really don't get the story. You really don't get an understanding of how they responded to God within their context, what it meant. And that's important because we can, you know, we tend to take the scripture and try to make it, force it into the modern world and say some of the things that it doesn't say, yep. you know, things that do apply. But what did it mean when it was written? Yeah, and it's true because you, you, one of the biggest arguments that they have of God is that he's sadomasochistic, he's Ooh. misogynist, and he Ooh. is, you know, so there's a, a whole bunch of words that they use to describe God, but they're doing it in a lens that's, they have, from a Western, you know, yeah, American yeah, lens, yeah, yeah. and without understanding, you know, the, the movement of what he was doing, both spiritually and physically throughout the Bible. So there's, there's some realities that we have to deal with when reading the Bible and understand. Yeah, I, all of you that have been part of our spiritual warfare uh, course of study, you know that the violence that we see in the Old Testament was a necessary violence. You, you, what does it mean? God, who is love, mm -hmm. say, kill everybody, men, yep. women, children. What does that mean? Livestock, don't yeah, kill anything. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we have to understand yep. why mm -hmm. such radical violence was necessary in the context of what was going on, yep. you know, in the nation of Israel. So I think, you know, that's, that's very, very real. So uh, take this, take this, you know, um, if we could just develop this theme, you know, in, in um, Luke chapter 24, Luke 24, 25, I think begin there. This is after Jesus's resurrection from the dead. All right. There is all of the talk going on about him, about the crucifixion, what took place. Uh, he, 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 he's up from the dead. All right, and only a few have seen him. All right, some women and some of the disciples. So here in Luke chapter 24, actually beginning at verse 13, uh, there are two of the disciples who are on the road to Emmaus. They're going mm -hmm. to a village called Emmaus, uh, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And while they're talking to each other, he just shows up. <laughs> That's the thing. After his resurrection, he just starts showing up in different places, like, just like, like that. Sneaky, sneaky from this. Exactly. <laughs> just come in there, right? So he, he appears to them. And, and in verse 15, while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near. And I'm reading from the English uh, uh, ESV, standard version. Drew near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Boy, we could unpack yeah, that. that. Because even when he appeared uh, to the women at the tomb, all right, they didn't recognize him. Mm-hmm. And we could, we, could, we could say, well, it's because he was in his, you know, his, Glory, his, his, his glorified his body. <laughs> and, uh, no, but there are times when God will actually uh, prohibit the human mind from perceiving mm-hmm. him. For, for, for certain reasons. We've so it wasn't touching the script. eyes, but more dealing with the human exactly. mind. Exactly. Their perception, the power mm-hmm. of their perception. Verse 17, and he said to them, Jesus says to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood, stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened, you know, there in these days? And, and he said to them, what things? And they said to him concerning Jesus of Nazareth. So that was the talk. The talk Mm -hmm. of the town was what happened to Jesus, the crucifixion, the death. Was he who he said he was? Mm -hmm. You know, all of that. What about his preaching and his miracles? A man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Mm. So you see the state of affairs is that, you know, now they're not sure yeah. because of his death on the cross. And yet he was telling his disciples that he, he had to die. He, was t- he told them in advance that this is how it was going to play out. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen Uh, a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but him they did not see. So, you know, there's drama here. Everything Mm -hmm. is playing out. He's, 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 He's up from the grave, like he said. He's out of the tomb, right? And now there's conversation of what happened, and now there's appearances of him, and that's beginning to spread. And look at how beautiful he responds. And he said to them, verse 25, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Remember, these are Jewish uh, Mm -hmm. believers here. So they're steeped in the scriptures, steeped in the prophets, the law and the prophets, right? Uh, Verse 26, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Mm Mm-hmm. And beginning with, and verse 27 is so important, and beginning with Moses, which is the law, the books of the law, and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And that's so important, those words. So he began to show them in their own scriptures that it spoke of him and everything that had happened right up to that point, as well, of course, things to come. So... After that, he then appears to other disciples uh, after his resurrection where they're shocked to see him. (laughs) So if you go to Luke chapter 24, verse 44, you go down to verse 44, it says, you know, um, well, he asked him, do you have anything to eat? And they're shocked to see him. He says, look at my hands, look at my feet. Here's the proof, you know. And verse 42, they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate before them. And I'm sure they're watching him eat like, you know, he was <laughs> dead. He's alive. And remember, this, this is, this is blo- the life of the uh, body is in the blood. Yes. Right? But he now appears as not flesh and blood, but flesh and bones. Mm-hmm. Yet the physical body is animated, not by nerves and blood and all that, but by spirit. Yeah. So this You know, I, gotta, I have a question. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> what happened when Adam... Sin was it a change? Absolutely, and and his his makeup, his structure, his genetic yes. structure changed. Mm-hmm. That's why being born again is called regeneration. Yep. Regeneration. That's where we get that word. We're gonna have time because you know. Regen. <laughs> <laughs> I have some. Theory. So verse forty-four. Then he said to them, "These are my words. What I spoke to you while I was still with you. In other words, why, before I died, before mm-hmm. all this happened, I told you what was going to go down, how it would play out. That everything written about me in the law." of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So even the Psalms was prophetic. The law of Moses, although it was a set of laws and rules and regulations that organized them as a people, it was still 
prophecy built into it, pointing to Jesus. Yes. But they, they didn't see it. They didn't understand it. Verse 45, I love this. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And it is true. You know, I remember reading the Bible as part of an English literature class. This is before I was a believer. Mm -hmm. And I read it, but I didn't understand it as anything but literature, a story, you know, a collection of writings. But with Revelation, no, there was none. So he had to open their minds in order to understand the scriptures. And said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And that's spiritual warfare talk right there. Mm -hmm. To all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And then, if we go to Acts chapter 1 while we're in the book, Acts chapter 1, all right, verse 3 he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So not only is he unpacking the scripture so that they could understand it based upon his centrality, because remember, the, 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 story, the story that unfolds about God's redemption of humanity and his restoration of cosmic order, Jesus is a central figure throughout the story. Yes. So everything points to him. So he explains this to them, he interprets it to them, and he spends 40 days after his resurrection unpacking the kingdom of God. All right? And verse 4, And while, stay, while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, verse 6, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? So even though he unpacks the word, <laughs> all right, spends 40 days teaching them about the kingdom, they still don't get it. Yeah. Because if they did, they wouldn't be asking him mm -hmm. if he was going to restore the kingdom to Israel. It was a broader reach. Now the Gentiles would be brought in and he would fulfill the original promise to Abraham that the whole world would be blessed by his offspring, that seed, which was Christ. Yes. But they didn't get it. They were still trapped in their Jewish nationalism. And now we have to go through a period in history where, you know, uh, it would take the work of the Holy Spirit because the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would come down. The work of the Holy Spirit in this age, to bring revelation, right, and, 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 and formation of the church, right, uh, convince the world of sin and righteousness, uh, <laughs> while dismantling the, the kingdom of Satan, which is built on lies and deceit. So we, we now enter an age, a period, where all of this now has to go on, but they didn't see it, they didn't understand it. So he said to them in, in the Gospel of John, he said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. When he comes, he's going to speak to you of things that I said and things that I will say. He'll bring all things to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. So he's going to speak to them historically and in terms of revelation. So here we are at a time that we are now understanding like them things that were not understood the whole time that the Jewish people had the scripture. Yes, no, that's good. Um, I thought of a couple of questions, but I want to stay focused. You know, <laughs> what kind of questions? Well, why, is, why is it taking so long? It's one of the bigger questions that people ask. It's been 2,000 years. Yes. And yeah. are we going to say another 2,000? You know, and I know no man knows the time or the hour. You know, there's a twinkling of the eye. You, know, <laughs> you hear. <laughs> well, well, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. Free will. Mm -hmm. Because God has chosen to work within the context of free will. Yep. So you have not only human history taking place and God at work in human history, but you have second causation. Mm -hmm. Humans are making decisions that are creating circumstances and situations. Remember Jesus said that you'll see nations rise and fall, kingdoms rise and fall. So humanity is going to be active and Satan's going to be active. Empire building, all right, world domination. All of those <laughs> things will come up, you know, throughout human history. And he's got to work within, you know, human will in order to draw people to himself. And some will come and some won't come. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 years, you know, 2,000 years is nothing trying to get folks 
to, no, no. <laughs> to understand and, and to cooperate, you know? So we, we want to lead into prayer because Christ sits on the throne ruling yes. and we rule with him, but he's ruling in this particular period. So it's just like, well, how is he ruling? And boy, we can get into some deep understanding and discussion of nations, national entities, who he puts into power, how that affects humanity. Because remember, he's trying to convince the world, the Holy Spirit is con trying to convince the world, all right, that sin doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And sin means everything tied to it. Systems, structures, forms of government, policies, procedures, processes, yep. all of those things work in that. So he wants to convince the world beyond a shadow of a doubt. He's making his case, right? Concerning sin mm -hmm. and concerning the only way of righteousness is within Christ. Yes. Yep. That's so funny. that's taking time. Yeah. You know, and he's allowing humanity to continue. No, and this is good because uh, with social media, with, you know, uh, YouTube and all the other platforms, we're, we're being, we're, we're seeing more. And you see a, 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 a different aspects of people praying. You know, you got individuals who say, oh, I just want to pray for you, the Lord's telling me, you know, and, and, and it's, it's like, okay, how do we filter out? How do we understand the authenticity of certain prayers? Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, we can really judge how authentic prayer is, but there's certain things that we can see, uh, as well as uh, what type of prayer uh, should happen at a specific time. You know, because like, um, you know, not to make, I'm not making fun of anybody, but you know, like Paula White, she started praying, and she was praying certain things to happen. She was praying a certain way. Uh, as, as, and You're talking about speaking in tongues. Yeah, speaking in tongues. Theologically, it's called yep. glossolalia. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, for, the forcing of, you know, saying, okay. Because it, yeah. it, how far do we go if we, you know, we say, you know, she kept, she kept on saying strike, but, uh, you know, how far do we go in, into that? Because then you got the other side where, the scripture says that, you know, prayer, you know, you compare prayer like the woman who, you know, goes to the, the, the judge saying, give me my, my due justice. Well, there are different kinds of prayer. Yes. Yeah, and approaches to prayer. But we have to be careful because when we talk about speaking in tongues, glossolalia, which is the, the language of ecstasy mm -hmm. as express, expressed in um, 1 Corinthians 14 in the, the Revised English Bible, uh, it uses that language, the language of ecstasy, which is speaking in tongues or glossolalia, is, is the, the soul communicating privately with God. Essentially, tongues is not meant for the public okay. unless there's an interpretation from those tongues to the public. So you got the prophetic tongues and then you got the personal. Exactly. So there is prophecy that is within the language of the context of the people where the prophetic word is being spoken. But then there is this language. The Bible says it. We can't deny it if we don't like it. We're uncomfortable with it. There are a lot of things that we can be uncomfortable with, demons and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But it's there in the scripture. And we can't deny it. So we have to understand it and put it in its right perspective, context, and there are rules that govern it. And when someone is engaged in, 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 in glossolalia or the speaking in tongues, all right, the scripture says that they're communicating mysteries to God. So it's a very personal interaction. So when you put it on public display, yes. all right, mm -hmm. then what we're going to get into in our, uh, our, our, our considering of a framework of eight approaches to prayer, eight mm -hmm. things you, you need to be real, uh, to realize, is motive. What's your motivation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? And too often we use these spiritual gifts to try to show that we're spiritual, yep. you know, mm -hmm. connected to God. And that's wrong. That's, yep. that's, you, you, you don't do that. So we'll talk about What's that. What's your motivation? In, yeah. That's a yeah. key. Motive. It's, it's a motive. key because uh, somebody uh, uh, on Instagram asked me a question. They said, uh, because they come from a certain school of thought, and in that school of thought, you're not saved. If you don't speak in tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all these different doctrines that are brought in that come from dirt, certain movements and experiences. And you got to be careful. You, you, you know, people's experiences are, I don't judge the Bible by people's experiences. I say that again. I please. judge people's experiences by the Bible. <laughs> yeah, say that again. And the scripture please. is the authority, <laughs> please, not your experience. You got to repeat that <laughs> in its entirety. James is typing this down. <laughs> please. Uh, look, again, we, I don't judge the Bible by people's experiences. Mm -hmm. All right? You have experiences. You've been to heaven. You've been to hell. You <laughs> saw this. You saw that. I, I don't know. I, 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 you know, if you say certain things that you, 
that you saw, and I go back to the scripture, and I say, well, okay, that doesn't quite line up. So too often we try to make the scripture fit our experience. No, mm -hmm. we don't judge the Bible by human experiences. We judge human experiences by scripture. Yes. Scripture is the authority, yep. you know, and, and we can't, we can't forget that. So I told her, uh, I said, for the theology of CCC, the theology of the house, you, it, it doesn't matter if you speak in tongues or uh, not. Well, <laughs> you know, the dealing with salvation. Yeah, you know? yeah tongues is, is not evidence of salvation. Thank it's you. evidence that a gift of the Holy Spirit is at work in yes. your life. It's not evidence of salvation. It's evidence of a, the gift of the Holy Spirit is working in your exactly, life. Exactly. Because I will tell you, and I'm, I'm careful with this, you know, within Santeria, uh, um, witchcraft, and they have worship services. They have these things where people actually speak in tongues. And this is why the Apostle Paul said, no man speaking in an unknown tongue will call Jesus a curse. Well, mm -hmm. why would he even say something yep. like that if there was not this kind of language at play, spiritual language, spiritually inspired language that didn't come from God? Mm -hmm. So we're going to dig a little deeper in that. We weren't <laughs> supposed to go into that today. Well, it's needed because when you look at the worldview, your worldview, your lens, and uh, there's certain elements that the church hasn't pinpointed that really speaks to our ability to have a proper worldview, yeah. right? And, you know, so whether it's demons, you know, angels, prayer, yeah. those are some key elements that we have lost in the church that needs to speak, be spoken about so that it helps us understand, even as we read the Bible, yeah. uh, it, it puts things in perspective. We say, okay, it doesn't speak to, th to me on this level, but it does have bearings as I continue reading the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's why we... We have this kind of discourse. Mm -hmm. We take the time to unpack it, to understand it. Um, so I want to talk about prayer. I, yeah. I, I'm going to spend some time over the next uh, month talking about prayer to lead up to uh, a Bible study that we want to launch in the early part of next year, uh, hopefully January, yes. where you can actually join me. <laughs> and we're going to line by line, precept upon precept, go through the scripture. Yep, and you know, people are asking still about the spiritual warfare. Well, it's tied to spiritual warfare, and of course in NSBT. And speaking of that, and, and just understanding where we are in this whole thing of prayer. All right, in Psalm 110, and I, I want to go to Psalm 110. That's Psalms 110. And I, I want to look at some language here, all right? And remember, Jesus said, showed them not only in the law, the prophets, but also the Psalms mm -hmm. spoke of him. So there are what are called messianic Psalms, those Psalms that are prophetic in that they pointed to Jesus. Yep. So now with an understanding of, of the scripture based upon the revelation of Christ, right? The person of Jesus Christ, we go back and we say, wow, this has significance. This has different meaning now. So in Psalm 110, it says this in verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Now, this is a text that Jesus raised when they asked about his identity, and he confronted some of the religious leaders and said, well, who was David talking about mm -hmm. when David was saying the Lord said to my Lord? Yep. He called him Lord, you know. So the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. The scepter is his rule, his power, his authority. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Notice this. Not in a coming kingdom where all is at peace and God has arrested human society and brought order. No. During the time of turmoil and resistance with enemies at work, he rules. Mm. This is the period that we're in right now. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments from the womb of the morning. Uh, the dew of your youth will be yours. This is beautiful language right here. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations filling them with corpses. And this really gets a little tough. Because, <laughs> so what is it talking about? Mm -hmm. The psalm is talking about the kingly and priestly ministry of Jesus. Yep. Because when we look in 
the, the New Testament, this, this, this verse is expressed in the New Testament. So, in, in inspired language and imagery, you know, David is, is, is interpreting uh, here through the psalm. And he may not have understood it when he was doing it because he was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But he was pointing to Christ reigning as king and priest. Remember, as a priest, he's ever there making intercession on our behalf. On, as king, he is now reigning over the earth, but in ways that, you know, we don't fully understand, all right? But he's there. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. So if you go to uh, Matthew 22, verse 44, Matthew 22, 44, and this is, this is where we get into Bible study mode. <laughs> Matthew twenty two forty four. 44, all right? This is the conversation, verse 41. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered uh, together, Jesus asked them a question saying, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Mm-hmm. And this, is, this is a setup, right? Because Jesus knows what the psalm was talking about because he later is going to interpret it mm-hmm. to his disciples. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David in the spirit, mm-hmm. under divine inspiration, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, <laughs> nor from that day did they dare to ask him any more questions. <laughs> he blew their head open mm-hmm. because this is their scripture. They didn't understand. He was the one that David was talking about. And, and they're looking at him in the face, but they didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. They didn't see it. Their eyes were blinded. Mm-hmm. They had eyes, but couldn't see. Ears, couldn't yeah, hear. Yeah. Hearts, but they couldn't mm-hmm. understand. So this speaks of Jesus reigning, not just in the age to come, but right now. Mm-hmm. So if he's reigning right now, and we are reigning with him as believers, how do we do that? What power do we exercise? Is it political? Is it, is it is in military? Is it is in social activism? What do we do? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it prayer? What do we do? And we're going to begin with prayer. No, that's good. That's, that's good. where it all starts. Yeah, because marketplace ministry, you know, what does that look like yeah. based on that view? Yeah. Yeah. So we're reigning with him yes. right now, yep. right here. Because remember, the scripture says, you know, uh, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Mm-hmm. And in Hebrews, it says, you are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So David was pr- prophesying about Jesus in his kingly ministry and in his priestly ministry, not in the age to come, but in this present evil age of darkness. Mm. What does that mean? How do we relate to that as believers? Yep. And, and that's so good. You know, one of the biggest questions you know, as we develop and uh, as we um, expound and expand on the text and the, 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 the scriptures, my question is for you is, what do you really believe? Because that will dictate your actions. Yeah. What you really believe. And as we learn, you know, we, we can walk with our held, held, oh, head held yeah, high, yeah. Uh, both in the, the confidence of the kingdom now and not yet. Right, so we yep. can walk with understanding that that we do have a, a role to play. That there's a significant role to play. We've been we received the authority to walk this walk, you know, and that's why you know in the beginning I said that that there's certain demands on us, you know, but they're reasonable demands. Yeah, you know, yeah. coming out of this understanding, I, I, we've got to know our power. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a chance to share a word of inspiration about the parallel between. Jesus's relationship with the darkness yes. and our relationship, mm-hmm. him as the light of the world yep. and us as the light of the world, yep. you know, and we've got to understand believers. You've got to understand your power. You've got to understand your authority. And we're going to dig into that. But in the context of prayer, yes. we're going to elevate your mind, yes. <laughs> elevate your heart, your passions, your will, your thinking so that you can be more effective as a witness living the Christian difference and testifying to God's love, life, and light. Yes, and, and that, that's why Friday service, praise and worship, uh, worship night, night of worship, was so significant. It was powerful, amazing. Israel, uh, you, Elder Pointer, you know, showed up. It was great to see, you know, the, 
the, uh, we had a packed you know, um, squad this, you know, this Friday. Yeah, I, you know what, and, and I'm just, I feel to say this to you also, especially uh, you that are, are, are with us, participating with us in the service right now. Don't use this stuff as a menu. That mm. uh, I like worship, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that part of the service. Oh, I just like the word, so I'll take that part of the service. They go together. Yes. The spirit and the word come together to effect change. Worship prepares your heart and mind mm -hmm. for the revelation of the word. Yep. So when you come in cold and skip worship, all right, you are robbing yourself of the preparation that worship and the Holy Spirit gives in order for your mind to have understanding when the scripture is preached and it is taught. It goes back to what you said. We went back in Luke. You know, Jesus had to touch their minds. Open their minds. Yes. Boom. Okay. <laughs> you heard that? Nope. I didn't they say didn't it. Hear it. They didn't he hear said it. it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's, let's, let's elevate our mind. Uh, you going to pray us out or what? Yes, we're yeah. going to pray. We're going to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you so much for the message that we received today. But Lord, we ask that it, it is not just something that's a part of, you know, what we've been hearing, but something that takes up residence in our hearts. Yeah. Takes up residence in our minds. Understanding, you know, the significance about Jesus and Jesus is Lord and the, the, the authority that he walks in, the here and the future. So, Lord, we pray and ask for a revelation of who we are to you, our worth to you, understanding that we are something and someone that matters to the most high God. So we ask that you just touch our minds, elevate it right here, right now. Hallelujah, Lord. As Hallelujah. we are praying, we ask that you just give us a sense of understanding and wrap our minds around what is going on now yes, Lord. and how it relates to the future. So, Lord, we ask that you also elevate our hearts. So that we have the emotional maturity to receive the very things that you're going to plant in our minds, reveal in our minds, open up the scriptures in another, uh, another way, Lord. Yes, Lord. So that we will operate in a level of maturity yes. emotionally, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. So Lord, we ask that you just, just use us. We are your vessels. We are your tools. We are excited for you to move in our lives. Not just for us personally, but for the individuals that we're going to come into contact with. Mm. Anoint us afresh. We ask that you just have your way in a mighty way. And Lord, throughout this week, we ask that as we approach the scriptures, we approach it with a more open mind. Yes, Lord. An open mind for understanding so that we can know, learn how to function and live this life yes. as a Christian. Yes, Lord. So Lord, have your way. We pray for this week as it is a week of Thanksgiving. And Lord, we ask that you just touch us so that we can move throughout this week just being grateful that we're breathing, grateful that we're walking, grateful that we're thinking, grateful that we can feel, grateful that we have somebody to speak mm, to. Hallelujah. And not get caught up on the things that we don't have. Thank you, Lord. But just shine on the things that we do have. Thank you, Lord. So Lord, we ask that you have your way. We pray for a spirit of peace throughout this week. We pray for the gatherings. We pray for, for, for protection that no harm or danger comes to these individuals, to us as your believers. We ask that you just anoint even Thursday right here, right now, as we, pre we pray. Yes, Lord. So it'll be a day of gratitude. Yes, Lord. More so with our eyes fixed on you. Yes, Lord. So we ask that you have your way in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. 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 That's good, man. You know, you, you had me thinking when you talked about <laughs> Thursday because it's a day that we set aside as a nation yes. to be thankful, yep. to thank God. Regardless of, you know, we eat and <laughs> socialize, and that's different this year because mm -hmm. of COVID. Um, but, you know, we declare America as a nation under God. Yes. When, when we do that, we're, as I said, you know, weeks ago, we're inviting God in to bless us and to hold us accountable. Yep. No, two things. Very, very important. So when we talk about one nation under God, and I believe that, that there's a strong Christian presence here in America. Christianity has shaped and fashioned, you know, American history, American thinking, which has allowed also, you know, for the changes that has been necessary in order to keep this nation moving forward. 
So when we declare a nation under God, we're, we're inviting God in to bless us, but also to hold us accountable. So prayer, that's the key that unlocks the power. Wow. And we're going to unlock some of that power in your life and in our nation, mm -hmm. because prayer affects nations. Yep. Yep. So, amen. So amen. Um, if you are with us and you've never uh, formally and officially surrendered your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, we've got one of our ministers who is Pentecostal blast. <laughs> <laughs> our, our own minister, Beverly, is going to lead you in prayer, and then we'll be back. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. We thank God for our Pastor A.R. Bernard and Pastor Jamal for that wonderful word that have been brought forth to us on today. And if this is your first time visiting us at Christian Culture Center and the Lord has really touched your heart and literally moved you to enjoy or enter into a relationship with the Lord on today, we're going to invite you to pray this prayer along with me. And just repeat it after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you today for literally touching my heart, causing me to know that my way, my plan for my life is not what you would have it to be. And today I denounce my plan and I embrace your will and your plan for my life. And today, I call you my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you pray this prayer along with me, there is some information on our screen that I would like for you to text it or to call that number so we can get in touch with you and encourage you along your spiritual journey. God bless you and continue to grow in grace. Amen. And if you participate in that prayer, there's a number on the bottom of the screen that you can call and uh, speak to the ministers or uh, you know, and different individuals to have a conversation what you just participated in. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of believers. Once again, that number will be down on the bottom of the screen. You know, I, I, I'm thinking and reflecting, Elder Beverly, uh, your mom and I met in the second church that we attended. There was one church that we went to first that we were referred to after we gave our life to Christ. Uh, but then that second church, uh, she was a member of that church. And well, you, and, you and mommy met Beverly, not you and mommy met. No. Yes. M your mom and I met <laughs> Beverly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, Elder Beverly. And um, she just took on a role as a spiritual... Uh, support and mentor in, in our lives because we were, we were new Christians. Mm -hmm. We were baby Christians. You know, I had a hunger for the word, but she just took on that role. And here it is, you know, 42 years later. Wow. And she's been a part of our ministry and continues her ministry of prayer on behalf of CCC and behalf, on behalf of our, our family and your mom and I. Such a blessing. Dedicated people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, in their own style. And that's, that's what we love about, you know, the kingdom of God. It's so diverse. You know, there are different styles of, of, of preaching and teaching and praying, etc. And it takes all of that to come together. That's the beauty of it. So, <laughs> ah, I got a little nostalgic. Yes. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us today. I pray that you were blessed by the exchange, the conversation. We're going to be hitting the board, going into a lot of scripture giving you some principles, digging deep in prayer, because you can't talk about prayer without talking about spiritual authority. Yes. What does that mean? What does it look like? How do we influence nations, uh, situations, and circumstances? You know, the scripture says, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And that's important, because in this world, they work differently. And Jesus made a clear distinction between the spirit of the world and the spirit of of God and the spirit of his kingdom. Yes. So I'm going to stop right here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Rita, we want to say happy Thanksgiving from my home to your home. And on behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Pastor Karen, we want to wish you all a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. 
because of COVID. We yes. to make sure that we keep it safe. Yes. And you should have an attitude of gratitude every day of your life because think about it, there's so much that you have to be thankful for when you consider those who are not where you are in some way in life. So again, CCC, thank you. Yes. Uh, the, the world that is participating with us across the country and around the world, thank you for being with us. And we cherish these opportunities to share the love, life, and light of Jesus with you all. As we leave this place. But never God's, God's pleasant. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord, Lord, period. period. We, we believe it, it we, we proclaim, proclaim it, and we're seeing it come, come to, to pass. pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week.